So in today's video, we'll discuss about the design of vertical drop. Okay, or it is also known as Sardha type fall. Okay, what actually a fall does then? Whenever the natural available uh, ground slope is steeper than the design bed slope of the channel, the difference is adjusted by constructing vertical falls or drop in the canal bed. And this type of fall are also known as Sardha type as we have already discussed. Such drop in natural canal bed will not be stable. Uh, therefore, in order to retain the drop, the masonry structure is constructed such a pukai structure is known as canal fall or canal drop as we have already said uh, you can see here for the sardha type fall we can provide two types of crest the very first is a rectangular crest and the other is a trapezoidal crest and depending upon the discharge okay whether the discharge is greater and generally uh, if the discharge is less than 14 meter cube per second a uh, rectangular crest is provided and if the discharge is greater than 14 meter cube per second then uh, we will provide a trapezoidal crest and you can see the faces of the trapezoidal crest is provided as 1 is to 3 towards the upstream and 1 is to 8 in the downstream cut off wall are provided at the downstream as well as the in the upstream but in the case of upstream in this figure we don't see but cut off wall are provided in downstream as well as upstream and the depth of the cut off wall uh, is determined by using formula that i'll be discussing in the design procedure uh, this h is the depth or head over crest and the total energy line not upstream full supply level so you have to understand that uh, in the design procedure i will discuss about that just i want to show the type of sardha fall that is a rectangular crest as well as a trapezoidal crest basically the purpose of fall is to dissipate the energy okay uh, to prevent from erosion and scoring this is a general uh, section of vertical drop uh, this is the crest okay uh, this is the upstream full supply this is the total energy line okay these are the two cotton walls at the end and at the upstream uh, this is the cistern or we can say depression okay the water comes and hit on the cistern which dissipates the energy for the design procedure the very first step is to uh, calculate the length of crest okay this is the crest and we have to calculate the length and basically uh, the length of crest is taken as the bed with the canal if there is no fluming and generally there is no fluming so length of crest will be equal to bed width of the canal now shape of crest in shape of crest we will determine vertical falls should be provided as rectangular or we will take a trapezoidal so it depends upon the discharge if the discharge is less than 14 meter cube per second then we will provide a rectangular crest with both face vertical and if it or the if the discharge is greater than 14 meter cube per second then trapezoidal uh, crest is provided okay for rectangular crest as we said it will have both face rectangular this is the top with bt and bottom width is taken as bm for top width the formula is 0 0.55 under root d okay d is the height of the crest above downstream bed level so this is the downstream bed level okay and d is the height of crest height of crest above the downstream bed level minimum base width okay bm which is calculated as h plus d by g g is the specific gravity of material and it is generally taken as 2 for brick masonry okay now it is for the rectangular crest now if we have a trapezoidal crest then we have to take top width as 0 0.55 plus h plus d okay this is the general difference it is a trapezoidal crest uh, in case of the rectangular crest both face were vertical but in this case the upstream vertical upstream uh, face is provided with, uh, provided with 1 is to 3 slope and the downstream face is provided with 1 is to 8 slope. The third step is to determine the crest level. This is the general equation. 
of discharge q is equal to cd under root 2 g lh under root uh, lh 3 by 2 h by bt to the power 1 by 6 okay this is s to the power 3 by 2 and cd is taken as 0 0.415 for rectangle and 0 0.45 for trapezoidal shape then here we have to assume the value of bt as 0 0.5 0 0.7 0 0.8 meter or in case uh, if it is given in the question you will use the value of bt with assuming the value of bt we can find the value of h because q will be given in the equation uh, L is the length of crest which we have uh, assumed or determined in the very first step uh, BT will be assuming then we can calculate the value of H the fourth step is upstream and downstream curtain wall so you can see here these are the curtain walls okay so basically curtain walls are for the protection purposes okay and uh, the depth of the upstream curtain wall is taken as Y or depth upstream divided by 3 and downstream depth is taken as upstream depth sorry downstream depth by 2 or you can see from the table 12.1 from the Augur book system elements so as we said system means the depression okay or it is a container for holding water such that it uh, takes the impact of water or reduces the impact of water system elements you can see here will require the depth that is x okay dip, depth of depression x length of system lc you can see here so for the length of system the formula is 5 into under root hl into h hl is the upstream fsl minus downstream fsl that is head loss upstream and downstream and h is the head over crest up to tail in the figure also i have shown h is the head above crest and tail or it is the difference between the total energy line or level of total energy line and level of crest now the sixth step is impervious floor and the length of the impervious floor is determined by bleak's theory or khosla's theory and minimum length of downstream floor okay you can see here the downstream floor is calculated or is taken as twice of water depth plus 1.2 plus drop okay that is h l now the seventh step is to calculate the uplift and thickness and the formula for uplift is maximum unbalanced head is given as x plus crest level minus downstream bed level divided by total impervious length multiplied by length from downstream to the point of consideration i will discuss this all in the numericals so this is a numerical of the vertical fall design so as i said you will be provided with the full supply discharge uh, in case you have been provided with a drop that is hl similarly full supply depth is provided bed level upstream and downstream is given belikes coefficient is given this is required for minimum uh, imp length of impervious floor okay and the bed width is given as 3 meter so as we know there will not be any fluming so the very first step that is crest length is determined with respect to the bed width so crest length is 3 meter because as we said crest length is taken as the bed width of the canal the very first step is completed now the second step is shape of the crest and crest level so assuming bt as 0 0.5 meter as we said if it is not given in the equation then we have to determine the or assuming the value of bt will find the h that is head above crest up to total energy line and as i said we will also consider the discharge it is given as one meter cube per second so you have to provide a rectangular crest so you can write here so we know the equation q is equal to cd under root 2 g l s to the power 3 by 2 multiply by h by bt to the power 1 by 6 for case of rectangular crest the value of cd is taken as 0 0.415 and substituting the value of other variables we can find the value of h on solving using calculator okay as we said the value of bt is to be assumed now uh, on solving we'll get the value of h now upstream total energy line as we said upstream bed level is given okay this is the upstream bed level which is 
100 meter okay 100 meter plus depth of the flow that is given as 0 0.75 so 100 plus 0 0.75 plus velocity head which can be calculated by using the formula va square by 2g va is the approach velocity and for velocity we have the formula q by a and discharge is given as 1 meter cube per second and area is calculated as 3 3 is the bed width multiply by water depth 0 0.75 so we can calculate the velocity now we can calculate the velocity head h a and it is comes to be 0 0.01 now substituting the value of h a here we can find the upstream total energy line because bed level plus water depth plus velocity head this the difference between the full supply level and total energy line is the velocity head okay now we can determine the rl of crest because we have the value of total energy line and we know the value of h that is head above crest so this is the head above crest h so total energy line minus h will get the value of crest level so upstream tail minus h and we get the value as 100.425 meter now height up to crest from downstream bed level we know the value of crest level so we are known to this value and this value when subtracted with bed level downstream we get the value of d okay so d is equal to upstream sorry crest level minus downstream bed level that is 100.425 minus 99 we get as 1.425 meter why we need d we need d to determine the top width of the crest so for crest uh, top with bt is equal to 0 0.55 under root d as we have already discussed so substituting the value of d as 1.425 meter we get the value to be 0 0.66 meter now the value should not be less than the assumed value okay it should be greater than that and now we will put the value again of bt over here in this equation and we will find the value of h okay you can see here keeping bt as 0 0.65 meter uh, and calculate the value of h which comes to be 0 0.344 meter now rl of crest is again determined that is 100.416 uh, keeping the new value of h upstream tail will be that uh, the value previously calculated height up to crest for downstream bed level again you can calculate it and final crest top with bt as 0 0.65 meter uh, which comes to be equal so it is okay now thickness of the base as we have already discussed h plus d by g here h is the difference between head over crest and total energy line minus head loss that is h e velocity head so 0 0.344 minus 0 0.01 in the figure also you can see the value of if this is h this is velocity head h a then h is calculated as h minus h a okay so you can see here h is sorry so h we can calculate as 0 0.331 and g is taken as 2 for masonry wall as i said now thickness of the base can be calculated using the formula so which comes to be 0 0.87 meter so the base is calculated as 0 0.87 meter the top is taken as 0 0.65 meter now the third step is to design the curtain wall so as i said curtain wall are provided upstream and downstream for the uh, protection purposes and for upstream it is taken as upstream depth divided by 3 and for downstream it is taken as up downstream depth divided by 2 so you can see the value 0 0.25 depth of the upstream cotton wall and downstream cotton wall 0 0.38 and generally the downstream cotton wall depth is always greater now the fourth step is cistern element this is the cistern as i said this is the depression which takes the impact of water cistern depression x okay this is x if we see this value we are determining and the formula is 0 0.25 multiply by h into hl to the power 2 by 3 okay and h is the head loss sorry hl is the head loss and h is the difference in the total energy line and crest so substituting the value of h as uh, 0 0.344 meter and hl as 
1 meter because we have been provided as the value of drop as 1 meter so putting the value of hl as 1 we will get the value of x that is the depth of depression 0.123 meter rl of the cistern floor the downstream bed okay if we subtract the depth of uh, down uh, cistern with respect to the downstream bed level then we will get the value of or level of cistern so rl of cistern floor is equal to downstream bed level minus depth of depression now length of cistern this value okay it is taken as 5 into under root h into hl so it comes to be 2.93 meter okay this is the length of cistern now the fifth step is the impervious floor as i said total length of impervious floor is calculated with respect this formula c into d c is a coefficient okay uh, in our case it is a blix coefficient which is given as 6 and d is the depth of crest level from downstream bed level which was calculated as 1.416 now 6 multiplied by 1.416 we get 8.5 meter so the total impervious floor from upstream to downstream cut off wall is 8.5 meter and minimum downstream floor length okay uh, behind the uh, fall that is minimum downstream floor length which is calculated as 2 multiplied by water depth plus 1.2 plus head loss hl so water depth is 0 0.75 and 1.2 we get the value as 4.90 meters so the downstream minimum downstream floor length is 4.9 meter okay now the remaining portion is to determine the floor thickness and for that maximum static head is to be calculated Here if we see it is uh, calculated as upstream crest level okay minus downstream bed level okay that is the maximum static head without considering the water crest level minus downstream bed level will get maximum static head now maximum unbalanced uplift due to maximum static head uh, x plus crest level okay this is a different expression here crest level minus downstream bed level that is maximum static head okay the numerator is the maximum static head divided by total impervious length multiply by length from downstream to the point of consideration in our case uh, we are considering the minimum downstream floor length so uh, we'll put the value of length from downstream maximum static head is 1.416 similarly total impervious floor we have calculated as 8.5 meter so substitute the value 8.5 meter over here and x that is the depression depth which is 0 0.123 meter now uh, maximum unbalanced uplift comes to be 0 0.94 meter okay and now put the value or thickness required is calculated as h by g minus 1 substitute the value of h as 0 0.94 meter over here g is taken as 2 as i said now thickness required is 0 0.94 meter which is nearly equal to 1 meter so for this we'll provide 1 meter thick masonry wall okay with respect to this uh, 1 meter thickness wall with 0 0.2 meter brick pitching 